Hey, what's up, my YouTube fam? I'm back today. We're going to be talking about, you know, the do's and don'ts when trying to get a charge off removed and the use of a 1099C. So we're going to kind of cover all of that. We're going to kind of throw out all the misinformation out there and really kind of bring it so you have a better understanding of how do I attack these charge offs? How do I get these charge offs removed? what strategies are out there. We're going to kind of cover all of that because this is one of the biggest things most people have a difficult time doing with charge outs. We're going to kind of cover all of that. Uh, I've already did a video on how to look at charge outs on your credit report and that strategy to uh, go and remove charge offs is based on what information is reported on your credit report but see but we also there's a different strategy in all of this and how you know the irs views charge offs how the creditor is viewing the charge off how charge offs actually are processed and what they mean when they uh, uh charge off the account and when do they process a 1099c how fast do they do it how many how long do they take before they do it all that stuff we're going to try to cover what questions should you be asking we're going to be covering all of that in this video today take your notes out get ready and let's get into it hey i appreciate all my new subscribers coming out to the channel hey thank you for hanging out with the best credit repair channel and uh, hopefully this information helps you move uh, your credit in the right direction. And that's the point of this, this channel, to give you the real deal, not trying to just give you information just because it sounds good, but to give you real information so you can do uh, put the right strategies together and know how to deal with these situations where you sound educated in these situations and don't sound uneducated when other people are reading your letters and they can tell you are clueless and the information you've received has been misinformation. So, <clears throat> first of all, what we want to talk about is charge off. Man, let me make sure this phone don't be trying to go off. Uh, so the first thing, charge offs. <clears throat> uh, what is a charge off? Uh, so a lot of y'all know a charge off means that the creditor has deemed this account uncollectible. They they feel like, hey, we're not gonna collect on this debt. We're not gonna hold this debt on our books. So let's go ahead and charge off this account. When a company charges off account, they have to report it to the IRS. Right, because why do they have to report it to the IRS? Because that is a loss of a debt that they have to report because anytime any company is gonna file those losses and get a tax benefit, that's why those write-offs help them lower, you know, their their revenue that they're gonna report so they pay less taxes to the government, so they write it off. And they sometimes some some creditors write it off really fast. Some creditors may not write it off in the year that the action happened. They may take two or three years before the action happened. So just because you received the charge off on your credit report that year, doesn't mean that they've already submitted a 1099C and wrote off that debt. <clears throat> it just means that they're no longer collecting on the debt. Right. And they're just going to put it on your credit report, knowing that it's going to report on your credit report for seven years. So they're not in a rush. They know that it's damaging your credit and hopefully from them damaging your credit may bring you back to the table to try to get some type of settlement on the account. <clears throat> now, I will tell you, or you you're here, some people that are giving out misinformation that will tell you that settling a charge off is not going to affect your score in any way i would tell you that is totally misinformation because you have to understand how the charge off is reporting on your credit report remember as a charge off every single month that that account is open the creditor is reporting on it unless he has sold that debt to a collection agency then he's no longer in possession of the debt so he can no longer report on the debt it could stay on your credit report but he can no longer continue to report 
But as long as that uh, charge off is in the creditor's hands, he can continually report. That's why you see either on some that says say C or some that say CO, and they'll continue to report it. The other thing, there's a balance still on that account. That is a negative balance, goes against your debt to income ratio, right? The other thing is the account is showing delinquent. It is a delinquent account because it's in a charge off status. So you have people to tell you, well, no, if you don't, if you settle, it's not going to raise. So don't settle. These are people giving you bad information. I would tell you if you have the opportunity and you can't dispute these off, which I've done a video on strategies to do that. If you can't dispute it off, your next option is to settle it. Why? Especially if you're trying to move your credit in the right direction, because one, it eliminates the balance which eliminates the negative debt. Two, it eliminates them from continually to report on the account. So the month that that is paid, they will no longer be putting C O or C on the account, which causes that, that charge off count to be older and older and older. The next thing, it is no longer a delinquent account. So of course your account is gonna, your score is gonna rise. It's not gonna stay the same because all those factors have been eliminated. It has been a change to your credit report and it is a positive change. Now the charge off is still a negative, right? On your credit report, but at least as a creditor, looking at your reporting, you have a charge off and it is aged and you've been properly building and, and change your behavior and payments on time then you're still allowed to be approved for credit. But if you still have charge-offs that you still owe, it still tells the creditor that you're irresponsible and that you may, you may default on a loan and not fix or pay off the loan, right? So it is a lot of positives to go with that. Now, with a creditor, back to what I was saying about the 1099C, the creditor to write off, to issue a 1099C, it has to be at least $600. Any charge off that they wrote off less than $600, they do not have to issue you a 1099C. They don't have to, right? But if it's over $600, they are required by 4681 to give you a 1099C. Now, some people may say, well, what if they sold the debt to a creditor. Now listen, every dollar has to be accounted for. So if they sold that debt to a collection agency, say the debt was $10,000 and they sold it to the collection agency for $1,000, there is still a $9,000 deficit that the creditor still has to submit and write off. They still have to write it off, right? And this is where creditors, the us as consumers, are not paying attention and challenging the creditors on you charged it off. You sold it to a collection agency, and I'm sure you didn't sell it to them for the amount I owed. So there was some type of deficit between the amount I owed and what you sold to collection agency. What happened with that? Did you write that off? That has to be written off in the form of a 1099C. They have to write it off like that. So that's when you challenge them. Did you, I see this account has been sold to a collection agency where, and I'm pretty sure you didn't sell it for the amount I owed. So where is the 1099C you had to submit for the deficit that was not sold to the, to the collection agency? Right? We cannot let creditors get away with that. We have to challenge them on that. Right, And those are strategies and challenges that you can use to get those charge outs removed off of your credit report. So, so when, you get in a, uh, when you get to the point where it's been sold, those are the questions. And it's more than $600 left over, you have to challenge the creditor on the charge off and that they sold that charge off and what was left over from what they sold it to the amount that was actually owed. And we need to do that. 
One thing, another thing you could do, creditors, listen, I know sometimes we move, but sometimes creditors are not submitting, they're secretly submitting 1099Cs to the IRS, but we as consumer are not getting those 1099Cs. How do I find that out? So first you need to find it out. There's two ways. You can ask for a tax transcript for the years you think they wrote it off. First, you should call the creditor and ask him, right? And you can record these conversations the same way they record you. You can say, well, I'm also recording the conversation that I'm having along with you. So, so this account was charged off. I owe 10000 It was sold to a collection agency. Was there a 10990C uh, issued to the IRS for what was left over? Was there a 1099C issue? If they say no, you still need to go and you contact the IRS. For the years, I would ask for the year that it was charged off, the year after that, the year after that, for every year that you think they may have, say you, this account was charged off in 2021. So you should look for your transcripts for 2021, 2022, and uh, we haven't filed 2023 yet. So 2021, 2022, ask for those transcripts. In those transcripts, it will say if the creditor submitted or sent you a 1099C. Those are leverage points. If they didn't send it to you, you never received it. You never was able to issue it, uh, enter it in on your credit report. Those are strategies you can challenge the creditor. Write the creditor a letter. You know, if you need help with that, for, for one, I give free credit analysis. I can really instruct you and help you with that. I'm, I mean, I'm helping the client now with uh, charge off issues where the credit reporting is all out of whack. Uh, but when I, that's not the video today. So, you know, you want to, you want to, if you need help with that letter, just let me know, but you want to challenge the creditor, quit sending 1099 C information to the credit bureaus. Credit bureaus don't care about internet. They're not going to be asking the creditor. Did you issue a 1099 C? Was there a 1099 C issue? The credit bureaus have nothing to do with that. The fight is not with the credit bureaus in these cases. The fight is with the original creditors to make sure they follow the laws and rules and make sure I receive the information that I have to. Right. So those are things. So, again, if it was sold, who did they sell it to? If they sold, you know, you could add. Well, how much I would ask. How much was this account sold to? If the creditor called you, listen, the, the, I mean, excuse me, if the collection agency called you, they know how much they sold the debts for because they bought them in a bundle pack. They just didn't buy one debt. They bought it in a bundle package. You know, we talked about the calling the creditor because I'm looking at my notes, call the creditor, right? Uh, and then that's what you needed. So if the creditor says, yes, we filed a 1099-C, you need to ask them, can I get that 1099-C? I've never received that 1099-C under 4681. You are required to submit the same a 1099-C to the IRS and a 1099-C to me. Right. So you have a lot of people, too. Let's move to the next thing. I want to I want to go over this. You have a lot of people that talk about. Well, they, they wrote off a 1099-C. I had to write it off on taxes, which became income, right? What you have to realize, too, is some people say, well, it's income. It can be income. It may not be income because is it going to throw you in a different tax bracket? Two, you're not paying the entire amount of the debt, even if you, it may bump your tax go up in the next tax bracket and maybe you owe $300 more, but the debt was $10,000, right? So, and there's, and there's this thing about income, which kills me about income. None of that debt is income. Yes, the tax is saying that you have to pay taxes on that, but that is taxes, it's not income. See, but they tell you that, thinking that, but just think about Taxes is not income. It's the amount of money you pay on the income that you received. 
but it is not income. So people will battle with me all this time and I and I always say, well, show me something that tells you different, right? But they can't do that. The other thing is I'm a guy that's going to look up court cases. I'm going to tell you if you went into a courtroom, what cases and what was the outcome of those cases when it come to 1099 C's? What did the courtroom say in different? So in some cases, for one, let's get this out. There is no law or court case that has set a precedence that say a 1099 C uh, uh, by the Fair Credit Reporting Act has to be removed off a person's credit report. There is no court case and no, there's no uh, 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 case that set a precedence for that to be a law. So let's get that out the way. But there are some cases with some of the lower courts, not the Supreme Court, but the lower district courts have said, hey, creditor, you received a tax credit. And the since you received that tax credit, it is unfair for you to continue to report this charge off on a consumer's credit report. Yes, there are court cases. One was for Discover. I have the court cases here. If you want to know, I can send them to you and broke down on what the court said about this. That's why I tell people there are multiple ways and different strategies, but you got to know how to put it all together to meet your needs and what you do. Because you may have a charge off that's reporting accurate. All the payment history is up to date. The balance, everything is up to date. What are you going to dispute? And then you're wasting disputes with the credit bureaus that say it's, it's, it's verified, right? So the challenge is not always with, is not with the credit bureaus on those cases. The challenge is with the creditors. Go after the creditors. Push the creditors to remove those charge-offs. But they are not going to remove the charge-offs if you owe a balance. They are not going to remove the charge-off if you owe a balance, right? Now... You could, if they're not reporting it correctly and you challenge them and you want to take a chance and take it into court because they're in violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act and the information that they're reporting is inaccurate or incomplete missing, yes, you could do that. But I would say do your research. Do your research in your state. What what could be the back lag from that? Would they be able to counter sue while you're in a courtroom? You need to do your homework on that, right? But with charge-offs, let me tell you, step one, call the creditor. Step two, I believe, I'm a big believer in get all the information in front of you. Step two, what is the best settlement offer? Step three, have this been written off? Have the creditor submitted a 1099-C, right? S step four. Look at your credit report. Look at it to see if there are any missing or incomplete or inaccurate information. Be honest with that. When you call the creditor, ask those, what is the balance? When did I open the account? Uh, you know, you. Uh, what is the best settlement offer? Start writing all that information down. Did you file a 1099-C? If you did, what year did you fi file a 1099-C? Next step, call the IRS. If you, you know, sometimes don't call on a Monday, Tuesday, you know, the phones are blocked up Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, probably the best days, maybe Friday, first thing in the morning, people ready to get on the weekend. They don't want to deal with the IRS Friday. Ask them, is it a way that I could get my transcripts for whatever year you think that they may have wrote it off and see if the creditor issued a 1099 C. If they didn't issue a 1099-C and the account's two or three years old, you need to be figure out why haven't you talked to the credit? Why haven't if this account is three years old? Why haven't you submitted a 1099-C by on this account? Now the creditor could go back and do an amendment to their taxes. Same way you can go back and do an amendment to your taxes, right? So the so, but you have to ask those questions, right? 
to I just want to kind of come back and kind of throw some things at you. Me, if you ask me, Larry, what am I going to do? First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my credit report. If it's reporting accurate, I'm going to be like, okay, because I've had a charge off. I had a charge off with Capital One. I paid the charge off. I vent the charge off was probably about five years old when I was going through this journey. And then I end up like I called them first. I tried to do a restrictive endorsement strategy. It didn't work. They sent me the check back. Say we can't do that. We're original creditor. Then I turned around and got a got. The, well, I got the settlement offer and I sent them what they but I used the restrictive endorsement to try to get it removed. They sent it back. I turned around because I. I, I tried to apply for a car one time and they was like, no, because of the car loan that was a charge off on my credit report. So they offered me a great deal. It was 19,000. They gave say, we'll charge it off for 2750. I turned around, called them. I paid the 2750 and then I challenged the charge off and got the charge off removed. That's what I did. Right. Sometimes you're going to take a nail. Some people don't like taking nails, but I know I'll take a nail because I know eventually it will come up with a win. And then I had it removed. Right. Then no problems. <laughs> Getting the car finance anymore. That was like the last negative thing on my credit report that I struggled with and tried to get removed. And I was like, you know what? I'm not playing with it. Sometimes as consumers, we play with this negative stuff way too long instead of getting it done. So we can move our credit forward. And from there, my credit report is a whole different animal now. I mean, stack of credit cards like that. I'm bringing in, stack all my stuff together. Credit cards stacked up. It's ridiculous, right? And then it just afforded me to be able to purchase a franchise, right? So, like, we have to get out of trying to struggle to try to wipe a credit report clean with all of our debt. Right. It don't work. Some of that we're going to take a little L. But I just want if you have any questions, if I didn't cover something or I wasn't clear when I was explaining. Listen, I give free credit analysis. I've talked to clients all the time. You shoot me an email. We can set up a call. I don't mind. Typically on the weekends or during the week, we can set up a call. Usually it's between 30 minutes and an hour and it's free, totally free. If you want my master dispute package, a lot of this information is in there. You can get my master dispute package. When you buy, I don't disappear like most people. You have my phone number. You have my email. You can call me. You can talk to me. You can say, hey, what do you think about this? What's going on with this? Right? So that's this. That's my way of giving back. Right? So if you want that, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. I'm not going to tell you something just because it sounds good and that's what you want to hear. I'm going to keep it straight up with you because you have to hear the real information so you can really move forward, man, in this credit journey, man. So much going on with inflation, housing prices go, interest rates on a house, 7% interest rates on a house. You can't afford in this day to have bad credit, man. Even good credit, the interest rates are high, right? You cannot afford to carry this bad credit. So... Hey, I appreciate y'all. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the bell for notifications, share the videos. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Any questions you have, please let me know. Shoot them in the comments. Shoot me an email. I always put up my email toward the end of the video. So if you want that, please do it. I'm here to help you. All I can do is offer to help what you do. I can, I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink it. So... Oh, I just want to help. So if you got it, like, subscribe, shoot me an email, ask the questions. I will tell you anything you need to know about a charge off. And uh, I will post up the video to help you on other strategies to charge off. Got any questions? Get back at me. And I'm out.